What is up, y'all? Welcome back to our ongoing series, How to Elevate Your Portraits and Content as a Photographer. My name is Idara Ekpo. I have been your host throughout this series on the Adobe Life YouTube channel. I really hope that y'all have been enjoying this content thus far because I am dropping gems after gems after gems, and you can expect nothing less than that throughout the remainder of the series. In episode one, I gave y'all an introduction to cinematic portraits where we talked about the power of color correction and color grading. In episode number two, we talked about how to maintain skin tone. So while you're doing those editing, you wanna make sure that you are maintaining the skin tones of your subject throughout the entire editing process. And in episode three, we're gonna talk about how to elevate the backgrounds of your portraits with gradients. So I am so excited for today's episode. If y'all missed any of the episodes previously, go ahead and stop, pause, pause this video, okay? I need y'all to go back, watch episode one and two, and then meet me back here for episode three. So one note I want to make sure I make is that throughout this series, we will be piling on the topics from previous episodes. So that way you all are seeing how I'm taking those topics and putting them into practice. So for today's episode, we're going to take the topics we talked about previously and implement them in the editing of today's portrait. So we will be doing some color correction, color grading. We will make sure that we're maintaining the skin tones of our subject as well as introducing the new topic of adding gradients to your backgrounds to elevate the overall look of your portrait. So we will be using Adobe Lightroom and Photoshop. Lightroom, of course, to go ahead and do that color correction, color grading, as we've talked about previously. And then we're gonna move into Adobe Photoshop where we're gonna utilize the gradient tool to add those gradients to our background. So let's go ahead and dive into the edit of today's portrait. So we're gonna go ahead and get started in Lightroom. I'm gonna start off with the Gen AI feature to remove this purple backdrop that is showing in the frame. I don't like it. I just wanna extend that blue backdrop up a little bit. So I'm gonna highlight that, I'll click apply, and it is going to remove that purple backdrop for me. And so that's the one thing I really love about this feature. It just does it so instantly and so seamlessly. So that is taken care of. Now, we're gonna come into our basics tab and just kind of work with our sliders until we get something that we like. So similar to what we were doing before, just slight color correction. I already feel like this portrait was lit very well. And so I just wanted to kind of just do some slight adjustments to get to where I would like it to be. And then obviously I always go and add a little bit of clarity, sometimes mess with my white balance to get my starting image. And that's our before and after. Then we're gonna go down to our HSL sliders. This is where I'm going to just kind of play around with some of the colors. I want to start off with this blue, not to show I want it to be like a true blue or an aqua blue. I think more of a true blue, so I'll fall, let that fall there and kind of work with the saturation and also the luminance within the blues as well. So I like where that fell and I'm now going to come into my orange and red for my saturation just to see what is going to impact the skin a bit more. I want to be mindful of how much I'm doing there, but I think that is a good starting point for right now. Now we're going to go ahead and send this photo into Photoshop where we're going to do some additional editing and also talk about the gradients. So as always, duplicate your background. We're going to start with selective color. We talked about selective color in the last episode. And so I'm going to use it instead of focusing on the skin tone, I'm going to use it for the background. I want to kind of get the right shade of blue that I feel like will suit this image the best. So now that that is done, I'm gonna go ahead and prepare my portrait for the gradient. So I'm going to start off with selecting my subject and then inverting that selection so that that way I am just on the background. That's because I want to add this gradient to the background. I'm gonna click on my gradient tool and you'll see here that you will have a list of different colors and types of gradients that you can start off with. I'm just gonna pick just honestly any one so I'm gonna go back and change the colors anyway. And then you have your different types of gradients that you can make. So you can click on each option to make different gradients. For example, if I wanted to do a linear gradient, this is what it would look like with the colors that I've already selected. Um, I'm going to bring down the opacity just a little bit so you can kind of see where it falls. I personally like to use the radial gradient. I feel like it looks the most natural with just having two colors. So I think that's what we're going to do for this portrait. You can click the middle um, centerpiece and kind of increase or decrease the intensity of that middle gradient as well. So now this is where, again, you can look at different colors um, and look at the different properties that are related to your gradient. 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on that center color and I'm going to change it to more of a white. I feel like it'll complement the colors in his top and shorts and also just kind of blend in with that outside color a bit better. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And again, you can see where you can really increase or decrease that intensity of how far out that gradient goes. So that's the before and after. Now I'm going to go back and I'm going to click on my opacity. I like to kind of see where this falls and see what I like or don't like. I think what I'm going to end up doing is changing that outside color. I feel like it's just too, there's not, it's not a seamless gradient, right? So I feel like the transition between the two colors is a bit much. But before I do that, I'm just going to go back into my blues and try to play around with this to see if that helps. I don't know if it's going to help, to be honest. I feel like I may have to go back and change that outer color, which I'm going to do right now. So let's kind of make it a bit lighter so that I feel like it's more of a seamless transition. And then I'm gonna pull back on that inner color and I like that a lot better. Now I can come back into my selective color for my blues and focus on getting the right shade of blue for the gradient. So I'm gonna zoom in here so we can see that before and after. And I just feel like that gradient just makes the background look a bit more professional, more seamless. And I just really love the way that looks, especially with that inner corner color going out into the blue. I'm gonna play around with the sliders, make sure I get a specific color of that blue that I like, put that all in a group. And that is our before and after. So at this point, it's just a lot of tweaking. I personally am really particular with the specific shades of each color that I use. So I think I'm just trying to go back and forth of whether I want more of an aqua or a true blue, but I really think that I'm falling for that true blue for this portrait. So I'm kind of happy where this is falling, but again, you can just play around with selective color and target these specific colors. So that way you can kind of see how this is really suiting your photo. Now I'm gonna show y'all all the different types of gradients that you do have. You can change things like the angle, you can change the type of gradient. It can be a linear gradient, which you can see here as I'm kind of going around this circle, I can change the angle. I can also scale it up a little bit. I can do a radial, I can do an angle, I can do reflected, I can do a diamond. There are so many different options for these gradients that you can utilize for your portraits. Again, I just love adding them to the background because I just feel like they just add a new element to the photo um, and also be another way to introduce colors you know more than one colors into your background so now that we've done that i'm now going to go ahead and focus on his skin just doing some quick selective color i'm going to focus in on the reds and then i will go into the yellows to kind of get that rich skin tone that i'm looking for um, similar to what we talked about in the last episode of being able to maintain skin tones. If you did not watch that episode, please go back and watch it. You will enjoy it. Um, and, and this is just, again, what I like to do when editing skin tones. Okay, so I am happy with what this image is looking like thus far. We're gonna go ahead and save it and go back into Lightroom where it's gonna go ahead and populate that image that we were editing in Photoshop. And we're gonna do some color grading. Now, this is where we talked about the color wheels. We did talk about these wheels in the first episode. So I'm just gonna come in here, add some colors to my shadows, highlights, and midtones. There is no exact science to this. I just like to see what colors fit the image the most to really give it that cinematic feel and just take it from, you know, just an original photo, a basic photo to something more cinematic and, and rich in color.
So now I'm pretty happy with what this color grade looks like. I'm now just gonna come and just make some final touches. You know, if I see any, you know, pimples, blemishes that I wanna remove, I'm gonna do that with my healing tool. I do like to edit skin in Photoshop. However, when there's just small things like this, I just use the healing tool because ain't nobody got time <laughs> to be doing too much. So this is what I'm just gonna do to make some small little cleanup. And I'm very satisfied with what that looks like. Oh, I love this portrait. I do feel like his skin is a little orange, so I'm gonna pull back on the saturation and show you all that before and after. And you can see how that color grading just made such a big difference. And I'm gonna show you again the before of where we first started off and where we are at right now. That is so cool, I love it. Oh, I really am really excited with this portrait. I love how it came out. I'm gonna add my final touches with the sharpening, masking. And yeah, I'm really happy with how this portrait came out. So I hope that y'all enjoyed today's episode. Make sure to comment down below, subscribe to the Adobe Live YouTube channel, and I will catch y'all in our next episode where we're gonna talk about color play. I feel like this is gonna be so exciting. I, I'm so excited, you guys, because we're gonna be talking about how to utilize hue and saturation in Adobe Photoshop to really make the colors pop, change the color, just change the overall game of how we utilize color in our portraits. So I will see y'all there.